In this video, we show you the new resumable rendering feature in V-Ray for Maya. This feature works for both progressive and bucket rendering and can be used in a unique workflow for rendering animated shots iteratively to allow others in your pipeline to work with drafts quicker. First, let's take a look at how resumable rendering works with the progressive image sampler. I'll open the render settings window and under the common tab in the image file output section is a checkbox to enable resumable rendering. Once it's activated, you'll see that the auto save interval setting becomes available. This option is only accessible when rendering with a progressive image sampler type and is helpful to automatically create a save point when resuming a render in situations such as a power failure or if the job is preempted on a render farm. Here in the V-Ray tab, you can see that the image sampler type is set to progressive. Now I'll start a render and my V-Ray frame buffer will appear, but no render is seen. Let's take a look at the Maya output window to troubleshoot what's happened. Here you can see a V-Ray error that says, render resuming was requested, but the current settings don't allow resuming because the output image file was not set. You'll see here that the image file output option for don't save image is checked. To get resumable rendering to work for our render setup, we need to disable this option. Then if I start the render again, you can see details about the progressive passes being completed in the help line at the bottom of the Maya UI. After about 10 passes have completed, I'll hit escape to stop the rendering. Now I'll open a window to show you the images folder within my project. You'll notice in the temp folder is a VRPROG file. This file stores the resumable rendering information. As long as V-Ray can see this file in the default rendering location, it will be able to continue from where we left off when we restart the render. Now watch when I start the render again. It will resume the process with pass 12 instead of starting over from the beginning again. Remember back to our progressive image sampler render settings? We had max render time set to three minutes. I'll let the render run the full duration, but we'll speed up the video so we don't have to wait that long. Now that the render has completed, our temp folder has a finished PNG image and it still has a resumable file too. Even though the render job was considered complete, we can still resume the render because our V-Ray prog file is still there. So starting the render again, we'll continue with pass 155, which is where we left off when we reached the time limit during the last render. Now let's take a look at resumable rendering with buckets. I'll open my render settings window. Note that don't save image is already disabled, so I can enable resumable rendering without having to worry about the output error we had before. Autosave interval is still grayed out because we're using the bucket sampler type. If we have GI set to light cache, this information is also stored in our resumable file, which means it won't have to be recalculated again when we resume the render later. And yes, distributed rendering is compatible with resumable rendering. For this demo, I'm offloading the rendering to a couple of nodes, leaving my computer free to capture this recording. The only thing left to set in my render settings is the image format. While the resumable file is saved as a V-Ray image file, I can save my final render to the format of my choosing. I'll start rendering and use the track mouse while rendering option to help make it more clear later on which buckets are completed. After a good number of buckets have rendered, I'll hit the stop button and we can look at the temp folder under images. Now there's a .vrimg file. As opposed to the progressive file, this resumable file can be opened and viewed to see the buckets that rendered. Now, if I clear the VFB to make it easier to see, starting the render again will load in the completed buckets from the resumable file and then continue to render the remaining buckets. The resumable rendering feature does not check for changes in the render settings. So making adjustments that would change the quality of the render will not requeue the completed buckets. You either need to leave the settings as they were when the initial render was started or delete the resumable file to start a fresh resumable render. As the render finishes, you can see that the resumable V-Ray image file is still in the folder, but now it is accompanied by EXR files for all the render elements set up for my output. Lastly, we will look at a way we can use resumable rendering within an animation workflow. The don't save image option doesn't matter because we're going to batch render the frames. So I will enable resumable rendering. I can set the auto save interval if I want and then set up the animation frame range. I'm using the progressive image sampler type and setting the max render time to one minute, 
but this can be adjusted up or down depending on how much time you have available and the level of quality you need. I'll start the batch render and elapse some time to when the frames are complete. In my images folder, there are two files for each frame, the PNG image and the resumable file. Let's take a look at the first pass of our animated shot. This workflow makes it possible to render a variety of lighting setups to render overnight on the farm, and then the director can review and approve which one she likes best. This initial animation may be a bit noisy, but it still could be used by a compositor to start a slap comp or an editor to move an edit forward. While we resume the rendering process and continue to improve the render quality without having to start over, I'm now going to return to my Maya scene and resume the render, but this time I will increase the max render time to improve the quality even more. And this time will be added to the calculations already done in the first iteration. I'll start the batch render again and elapse some time to when the rendering is complete. Now we have a second pass of our animated shot with less noise that can be used to swap out the initial one in our pipeline. 